Okay, now which icon is the one that's the internet? Yeah, but, but which is where does it go? Well, I thought okay. that was Granicus, but the top part. Yeah, yeah that I know. But he just tried Once it. I get there. So. <laughs> Yes, you can. I can give you a copy of the agenda on paper, or you can log in into the our website pbaz.net and um, follow the agenda through our website. Okay. It will also be on your screen. It says AC um, presents the webex. So we can't use these. <laughs> cool. <laughs> if he can get it fixed. <laughs> I got a copy. Yeah. Get on our, you're on your phone, aren't you? I think you can get on the thing for that. I don't know if channel 56 is up right now, but we're just going to be taking a couple minutes waiting on Casey here to get us, get us live on the internet. So that's what we're waiting on. At least that's what I believe we're waiting on for that. You could do okay. it individually. This if you want. Go up to uh, agendas and you can follow that way. You won't be able to vote, but you can still open up the uh, individual uh, Call to order Town of Prescott Valley Council meeting, April 9th, 2020. Welcome, everyone. Uh, for those that are in attendance, if you'd like to please stand and join us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Hopefully everyone at home is seeing us on either their TV or the internet. Clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Hunt. Here. Council Member Kendall. Here. <laughs> Council Member Packard. Here. Council Member Grossman. Here. Council Member Anderson. Here. Vice Mayor Nye. Present. Mayor Polguda. Present. We have a quorum mayor. Thank you, ma'am. And just for those that are watching this, we don't have our council doesn't have this tonight so we'll be doing all motions via Roll call. vote vote will be all verbal yeah so we'll just move on to item four uh just start with our proclamations i'm not sure who's reading this if the clerk's up but yeah. first one up is tai chi and kiang day world tai chi and Qigong Day. Whereas World Tai Chi and Qigong Day is celebrated in 80 nations annually, and whereas the Tai Chi and Qigong are ancient Chinese arts that provide health benefits to people of all ages, including stress reduction, improved focus, coordination, flexibility, and balance, and brings people together in harmony with the environment. And whereas the World Tai Chi and Qigong Day is always celebrated around the world, on the last Saturday of April each year. Now, therefore, I, Kelp Laguda, Mayor of Prescott Valley, do hereby proclaim April 20, 2020, as World Tai Chi and Qigong Day, 
in Prescott Valley, Arizona, and encourage her citizens to help create a wave of healing energy by joining in this worldwide event. Thanks, ma'am. I'm just going to keep you busy tonight with these. So t next one up is Fly Your American Flag. Or Mr. Tarkowski, are you taking this one? Fly Your American Flag Month. Whereas the nation is in the midst of an epic fight against the invasive COVID-19 virus, and whereas the town of Prescott Valley and its citizens are making every effort to flatten the curve through social distancing and other unprecedented measures and sacrifices to do our part to lessen the effects of the COVID-19, and whereas the town of Prescott Valley is designating April 2020 as Fly Your American Flag Month to demonstrate unity and support to our nation's fight against COVID-19, and whereas by flying the American flag, we also demonstrate and honor the efforts and sacrifice of our essential workers, medical community, and first responders who are putting their lives on the line fighting this virus. Now, therefore, it be resolved that I, Cal Palguda, mayor of the town of Prescott Valley, and on behalf of the town of Prescott Valley, or of the town council, do hereby proclaim April 2020 as Fly Your American Flag Month in the town of Prescott Valley and encourage our citizens to fly the American flag throughout the month of April in demonstration of our resolve to the nation that we will overcome this challenging pandemic as a team willing to proudly show our colors. Thank you. And for those of you that haven't seen it, I mean, head on down to the library or, or check out Lakeshore. You'll see flags strewn across Lakeshore. And um, although we should be flying our flag every day, it's just kind of a, just a sense of community and a symbol that shows that we're in this together and uh, Prescott Valley, we're going to get through this. So. Next proclamation, Arbor Day 2020. <clears throat> Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees, and whereas this holiday, called Arbor Day, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas tr trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and whereas trees in our town increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community, and whereas trees wherever planted, are a source of joy and a spiritual renewal. Now, therefore, I, Kelpel Guda, mayor of the town of Prescott Valley, Arizona, to hereby proclaim April 24, 2020, as Arbor Day in the town of Prescott Valley. And I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect their trees and woodlands. And I further urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. Thank you, ma'am. Next one up is going to be Stem Cell and Bone Marrow Awareness Day. Stem Cell and Bone Marrow Awareness Day. Whereas every 10 minutes, someone dies from a blood cancer or 148 people every day. And whereas 70% of patients in need of a stem cell or bone marrow transplant are researching for an unrelated donor. And whereas there are 18,000 patients in America every day searching for a stem cell or bone marrow match, and whereas African American, Asian, Latino, and Native American donors are underrepresented on the Be the Match registry, and whereas the Jada Bascom Foundation and Gianna Moore are raising awareness about the simplicity of joining Be the Match with the Steps to Marrow walks, and whereas Karen. Zone Braciti was saved by a bone marrow donor match by the United States National Marrow Donor Program, Be the Match. And whereas the Prescott Frontier Rotary Club supports the enrollment of potential stem cell and bone marrow donors to save the lives of patients in need of a stem cell or bone marrow transplant. And whereas people between the ages of 18 and 60 who are medically eligible can be the match by 
texting LIFE to 61474 and whereas by donating stem cells or bone marrow, you can save a life. Now, therefore, I, Kelpa Guna, Mayor of the Town of Prescott Valley, hereby proclaim April 16, 2020, a stem cell and bone marrow donation awareness and encourage all individuals to participate in the fight against blood-related cancers. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on, item 4E, National Library Week 2020. <clears throat> Whereas today's libraries are less about what they have on the shelves and more about what they can do with and for their communities. And libraries have long served as trusted and treasured institutions where people of all ages, interests, and backgrounds can come together and learn alongside one another. And whereas libraries of all types are at the heart of the cities, towns, schools, and campuses that offer members of the community a welcome space and opportunities to explore new passions through technology programs and services. And whereas libraries and librarians help patrons find tools to help improve the quality of their life, promote the free exchange of information and ideas for all, are cornerstones of democracy. And whereas libraries and librarians strive to develop and maintain programs and collections that are as diverse as the populations they serve, and work to create an equitably, equitable society by providing free access to accurate information to all people. And whereas libraries are a resource for all members of the community regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or socioeconomic status. By offering services and educational programming that transform lives and strengthen communities. And whereas libraries, librarians, library workers, and supporters across America are celebrating National Library Week, now therefore be it resolved that I, Kelpa Guda, Mayor of the Town of Prescott Valley, do hereby proclaim April 19 to the 25th, 2020, as National Library Week, and encourage all residents to visit the library, a place where we can all belong and discover who we are because of you, libraries transform. All right, you're almost there. Next one, <laughs> Fair Housing Month. Okay, Fair Housing Month. Whereas the Civil Rights Act of 1968, commonly known as the Federal Fair Housing Act and the Fair Housing Amendments Act of 1988 prohibit discrimination in the sale, rental, leasing, and financing of housing or land to be used for the construction of housing or in the provision of brokerage services on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, disability, familial status, or national origin. And whereas the 1968 and 1988 Federal Fair Housing Acts declare that it is a national policy to ensure equal opportunities in housing. And whereas April has traditionally been the sign as Fair Housing Month in the United States. Now therefore, I, Kel Pagura, Mayor of the Town of Prescott Valley, to hereby proclaim April 2020 as Fair Housing Month in the Town of Prescott Valley and to hereby urge all citizens of this community to comply with and show their support for the letter and spirit of the Fair Housing Act. Nice job. And now we're going to be moving on to schedule announcements and presentations. And then if someone would see who's out in the lobby, if we can invite them in for this. I don't know if anyone's there. Chief, if you can hear. Thank you. Just invite, yes, whoever's out there. All the we bring, we're bringing them all in, correct? Yes. Yep, we're going to bring them all in, and we're going to be doing the selection of primary election ballot name order. Yes. Yes. And clerk, while we're, actually I'll hold off until yeah. they come on in. Thank you. Come on in everyone, just grab a seat, stand, do whatever you'd like. Make sure you're six feet away from each other. All right. Kirk, you just want to explain a little bit about mm 
what we've done so far? So Mayor, council members, and the audience, as you probably already know, April, Monday, April 6th was the last day to submit signature petitions for all those wishing to run for the four council vacancies this August. Despite the madness outside in the world, the clerk's office received 12 candidate packets from very talented and experienced citizens. Now, the town contracts with Yavapai County for election services, um, due to the number of candidates that filed in our office, the county has stated that it is unfairly to equitably rotate the names on the ballot. So the requesting we do, we, um, the requesting we determine the order of the names by drawing lots in public at a public meeting like this one. So what we'll do right now is I will place the names of the candidates. But you're going to read them and pull them out. <laughs> so I'll read the names of the candidates that are written in this piece of paper, and then we'll have our town manager serve as our impartial person. He's going to pull them out, read the names out loud, and we'll write them as we go to determine that order, okay? okay. So, Clark, just to be clear, the first one out will be the first Correct. on the list, and then we'll just we'll go number that them one. in sequence from 1 to 12. And that's why it'll show on the ballot? Yes. Thank you. And the candidates are David Dome, Steve Carros, Brenda Dickinson, Marty Grossman, Roger Kinsinger, Jeremy Ann Queeman, Mary Williams, April Hepperly, Lori Hunt, Bart Schatzman, Elizabeth Kennedy, and Steve Davis. Brenda Dickinson, okay. Jerry Ann Quimen. Jerry Ann Quimen. Steve Davis. Steve Davis. Marty Grossman, Elizabeth Kennedy, Elizabeth Kennedy, Steve Carroll, Steve Carroll, Roger Kin Kinsinger. Roger Kinsinger. Mary Williams. Mary Williams. Bart Schatzman. Bart Schatzman. April Hepperly. April Hepperly. Lori Hunt. Lori Hunt. David Dom. David Dome. Thank you. All right. I mean, that's Thank you, everyone. We have our order. 
Thanks for coming, everyone. All right, moving on, I don't know if anyone had it, but 5B will be deferred for this evening. It was CAFMA Ambulance White Papers and Year End Report by Chief Scott Freitag. The later meeting. The, uh, the chief got a hold of us and would like us to postpone that. Correct. Perfect. So moving on. We'll just move on to item six, council comments, communications, starting on the end, Councilwoman Hunt. Uh, good evening, everybody. I hope you are well. And I just wanted to let everybody know again that our PVAZ website, pvaz.net website is available for all the information you want and that there is a news release on there showing how fiscally responsible our town manager is in that he has uh, kind of froze the buzz budget and froze hiring and is preparing us for potentially less revenue coming up for the new fiscal year. And we hope that that's very short term. So I want to thank, thank the town manager for that. And also, um, Thank the mayor for coming up with the Fly Your Flag Month. Ours is up, and it looks great. And especially thank Heidi Dom Foster for all the information that she sends us twice a day and on how on top of it that she is. And um, I'm really proud of her, and she's doing a great job. Oh, and I also wanted to say that um, in light of us complying with the Governor Ducey's orders, that um, it's not our responsibility to enforce, but we do educate, inform, and provide guidance to our citizens, and that we hope they do their best to be responsible in our community. Thank you, ma'am. Councilman? Yes. Uh, all right, I'm going to take this down for a minute. Uh, everybody know, hopefully everybody knows, I'm the liaison to the uh, Humboldt Unified School District and as you know, uh, the district superintendent has taken a job uh, as superintendent down in Marana. Marana, okay. And it was in, uh, we were informed today that the assistant superintendent uh, Cole Young has taken a position uh, in. Uh, why is the brain not working right now? Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, he's he's taking it. Uh, at another location right now. Anyway, so we're going to have the two top positions in the school district uh, up for vacancy. We, they've already started working on uh, rehiring, you know, hiring somebody else and putting it out there. They're close to getting a decision on a new superintendent because that's been in the works for about a month now. So they're working on it. Uh, the other night there was a uh, school board, school governing board meeting and it was, they were able to stream it, and there was a lot of good information there. So uh, they're still functioning, and they're working on uh, their new budget. Because, of course, like us, they're going to have a reduction in their uh, amount of money available to them because the state isn't making any money. So they're, they're working all those details out and the numbers out. So school will go on. It will happen for next year. And comes the new school year, we will have uh, two new people leading the, uh, the school district. Uh, another thing regarding the uh, Fly the Flags, it was brought to the attention of the two organizations that put the flags up on Highway 69 that according to U.S. flag code, uh, they're not illuminating the flags at night. So between today and tomorrow, all the flags along Highway 69 uh, will be taken down. It's not that the organizations, which is the VFW and the American Legion Post 108, uh, want to take them down. It's just that they're, they found out they're not in compliance with the U.S. flag code. So they're, they're adhering to that uh, due to some pressure from the uh, citizens making us aware of it. So I just want to pass that along. And we think it's a great idea that we're flying the flag, but we just can't do it because we can't comply with the flag codes. Thank you. Vice Mayor. I want to thank two groups of people. The first group I want to thank is our town employees. Um, I went around the building thanking people that were here, keeping a safe distance, following the rules, because I don't think we should take it for granted. 
They're here, they're doing their job. And I want to give a special shout out to the library since we had that declaration today. And guess what? The front door is closed, but the drive-by door is not. You can still utilize the library, and I want to thank all the staff for doing that. Um, I want to thank the community of Prescott Valley. I happen to be aware of all the various efforts to help people who must isolate must not leave their homes and how well cared for they are because so many organizations individuals church neighbors have made sure that their needs are taken care of how do i know because so many people keep checking in on me to see if i need something <laughs> so bravo bravo town employees and blessings on all our citizens of our wonderful Prescott Valley. And just to reiterate what the vice mayor said, just everyone just hang in there and be positive. We're going to get through this. Uh, we do updates uh, every day in regards to what's going on with COVID-19 and how the town's responding and how the county's responding. So please, if you haven't had a chance, go over to the Yavapai County Health Services website. You'll get your updated information. And as always, use that information um, to garner your opinion on how things are going, not social media um, at all. So with that being said, folks, just let us know if there's any uh, problems at home, if you're having any issues, or if there's any stress levels that are going up and you're just not sure where to get any answers to your questions, reach out to the town staff um, via email, or you can use social media to get a hold of us. Just don't use the information from other sites or people's opinions or things that they've heard to justify what's going on in town, so. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Just, just to let everybody know, uh, Cole Young got the position of uh, Mojave County. Just to All right. make everybody Mojave. know what's going on. So with that being said, we'll just move on. Item seven, consent agenda. All matters listed under consent agenda are considered routine by the town council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately for discussion and possible action. Council, we've all had a chance to review. Uh, any questions, comments at this time? I believe there's one on the end with Councilwoman Hunt. Uh, set, I have some comments on 7F. Okay. 7F, regular town council meeting minutes for March 26, 2020. Yes, and I've already provided this information to the clerk, but under the minutes, March 26, under item 8F, I would like to add, Council Member Hunt asked to confirm that there were not actual homes proposed on any of the four acre area, period. Mr. Parker confirmed that was correct, period. Hunt further confirmed that the developers should not begin grading on this area until after zoning is acted on in two weeks plus 30 days after, period. Parker stated that staff had advised the developer of this, comma, and that owners have the ability to grade so long as there is a SWIP plan in place, period. Clerk, go so, ahead. I was going to okay. go ahead. You first, Clerk. Well, I was pretty much going to say probably what Ivan was going to say. We need two motions. One so that's what I was going to do. I was going to remove, we'll remove item 7F from our consent agenda. Is there anything else we'd like to remove at this time? If not, can we get a motion to approve consent agenda with all items listed with the exception of item 7F at this time? I'll make a motion to accept the consent agenda uh, with the exception of 7F by voice vote. I'll second. Clerk, please call the vote. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Grossman? Yes. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Vice Mayor Nye? Yes. Mayor Pulguda? Yes. Council Member Hunt? Yes. Council Member Packard? Yes. The pass is unanimously. Thank you, ma'am. Now I'm going to look for a motion to put item 7F and get an approval with the comments made by Councilwoman Hunt, unless someone else has anything else to add in reference to that. I believe it's already on the record to what she would like added. 
So I would like that. to make a mo oh I'm sorry. Oh. I'd like to make a motion to um, add the comments that I read subject to Mr. Parker's okay, he's giving me a thumbs up uh, to item seven F. Seven F. Uh, amend, uh, minutes as amended. I'll second that. Clerk, please call the vote. Council Member Packard? Yes. Council Member Grussman? Yes. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Schumacher? Yes. Council Member Hunt? Yes. Vice Mayor Nye? Yes. Mayor Palguda? Yes. The passes unanimous, Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on, item eight, old business, zoning map change, ZMC 18-011, viewpoint 89 LLC. This will be a second reading. I believe Mr. Parker, you're here. Um, if there's any questions or comments or things that have changed, if you'd like to just update the council and reference anything that's happened since the first reading, please. You need to go back to the first one. <clears throat> Uh, we've received quite a bit of, of comment uh, regarding grading on this site. We've worked successfully with the developer. He has, on his own accord, uh, stopped grading. Um, he was under contract, of course, with the grading contract. Uh, this is the second time that we've looked at this. Previously, plans have been approved, and uh, like uh, referenced in the minutes for the 26th, indeed, a SWIP plan uh, was completed. Uh, the developer worked with staff after receiving a stop work order to make sure that the uh, property was intact from a stormwater management standpoint, and they have since ceased uh, grading of the property. Uh, that's pretty much where we stand between the 26th and now. Councilman? Yes, I would like to ask Mr. Parker, have there been other incidents where uh, we've had developers or people grading their land before they got the uh, final plans in the way uh, the community has lately been complaining to us? And there are many instances in Prescott Valley where people have graded at risk. Uh, currently, there are two projects underway that are currently grading at risk. Um, the property to the north uh, project that has been developed, uh, that project also graded at risk. So there are many instances where a developer uh, with an approved SWIP plan has uh, marshaled uh, forces to be able to get uh, the property graded properly so that they can start to put in infrastructure. So to answer your question directly, many, many uh, uh, developers have graded at risk uh, without approved uh, plans. Thank you. Mr. Parker, you might as well just stay there for just a moment. So just just to be clear, so we have a grading permit that people apply for, whether you're grading your residential property or a large property like this, correct? We have two different thresholds for grading permits. One is at a 50 cubic yard threshold, which would be typical for grading on site for preparation of a foundation and that kind of stuff. Then we have engineered uh, grading. Uh, that is, uh, I believe, a threshold greater than 50,000 cubic yards where an engineer has developed that. Um, in both instances, there is a requirement for a SWIP plan, which is a stormwater protection plan, making sure that water doesn't run through the, the property and create turbidity downstream in creeks and rivers. So in all the cases where someone's actually moved dirt, they all have the SWIP? Yes, they would have to have a, an approved SWIP plan before uh, they would be able to move dirt. And that was done in this case? They have an approved SWIP plan, correct. Can I ask if that SWIP plan was in place prior to them moving dirt? Uh, the SWIP plan was being placed while they were moving dirt. It's not like you go in and you complete the SWIP plan, you move the dirt in order to be able to complete the SWIP plan. Sure. Uh, these uh, folks came in. Um, after I did the stop work, there was quite a bit of people that wondered why I didn't issue uh, citations, and the reason why is because they wanted to make sure that the property could stand fallow for a period of time, so they went in and completed the necessary grading to perfect the SWIP plan. Gotcha. 
I think the, the biggest concern, and I, I believe Mr. Everson's here, um, is just the optics of the whole whole situation where I understand that you mentioned the contract was in place to move dirt. When we were receiving calls in regards to equipment started to show up week prior to approval. Then on approval, Thursday night, literally the next morning, dirt starts to get moved. And I think that's the biggest concern. And I don't expect the answer from you. And if Mr. Everson, if you'd like to comment on this, I just know people would like to know, understand how that whole process works in regards to, I recognize it being your dirt and you moving it, but just the whole the order of how things worked, I just don't think worked out too good in my opinion. Well, and I, I can share with you that um, as the uh, acting, in this case, building official, because the building official was away, I do have the ability to issue permits for at-risk grading. In this instance, I elected not to. It's unusual that we would do that. Rather, we would just let them go at risk, knowing that their SWIP plan is in place. And then if they uh, screwed something up, they'd have to come back in and fix it, um, because we have not joined with them in approving their plan. We have other instances, though few, where people actually get a grading permit in advance of commencing grading. Um, and those are fewer than the other where people move forward, especially in this market, to try to take advantage of the market by getting the grading done so that they can install infrastructure and build lots. I, I completely understand time is money when they're building. I just, I think we just set a precedence where it's just been allowed and I just, I think we just tighten that up a little bit, I think is what we need to do for future, future problems or future issues what? in regards to this. I don't know what the rest of the council, this is obviously just me speaking in reference to this, but if we had just, taken a few more steps, a few more days, or a few more weeks, or whatever it was, then this isn't an issue, and we're literally going, quote, unquote, by the book for permit purposes. And given the opportunity, when we start doing work studies again, I'll bring that issue back to you. And, and I recognize in the past, um, we've been a, a pro-builder friendly environment, and that's what we needed to do in Prescott Valley. I just think we are at a point where we can change how we, quote, unquote, do business, and just hold certain people accountable for the way we go about. And again, that's just my opinion. I don't know if council has anything else to add with that. Thank Mayor. you. Oh, sorry, Mayor. So um, I concur with what you said, Mr. Mayor. Um, Richard, we, their SWIPPIES was approved by the end of December, right? Uh, the SWIP uh, was approved uh, many months ago, correct? So um, they could have started grading the A and B section in January. They, they could have, yes. Um, I had reached out as is referenced in our conversation when you were, uh, we were asking about on the 26th. I did reach out to the developer and I said, I don't think you need to, you need to be uh, concerned about grading in those four acres, leave those alone. The rest of the property was actually entitled in 2006. So that goes way back. Uh, the engineering, as you pointed out, was approved months prior to them beginning grading. Um, so, yes, it is an unusual circumstance. So, and then I think I heard you, because I listened to the minutes again from last meeting today, <clears throat> and I think you, I heard you say that they were just grading A, not That's, B. Is that correct? That is correct. And they're not grading, grading any of those yellow areas near A? That's what I'm understanding, correct. Okay, thank you. When, what can the community expect after tonight? Is there a time frame when we're going back to business? Well, I believe, again, they have an approved SWIP plan. They have moved, um, uh, albeit a considerable amount of, of earth, to make this thing work. Um, these are mass graded lots, uh, very similar to many other developers uh, throughout the community. They should not uh, be grading within the four acre portion. Uh, certainly, and I can verify that. Um, but I'll coordinate with the developer. You know, I'm hoping he'll wait 30 days uh, after this reading before he starts uh, forward. However, I'm quite certain that they've got obligations, the developers, to the people who contracted to move the dirt and uh, complete the work. Um, so I'll have to coordinate that with legal counsel as well as the developer. And I, I know, Ivan, you don't like to be placed on the spot reference this, but then why are we here? And why do we, if 
the developer can just be like, hey, we'll just go about doing our business and we're just going to move dirt anyway, and there's no ramifications from the town, what, what's the recourse? Well, Mayor, you are asking a question that I'm not going to talk about, but I think it's important to point out that this is at risk. There's okay. a difference between doing something with all of the plans in place and doing something at risk. And then and I just want to make sure that's clear then, that the at risk, if it doesn't meet the requirements of the town, then no building permits are issued, and then that's where the developer is then st stuck in that position. So it is obviously in his best interest or her best interest to develop the dirt according to the town rules. Is that correct, Mr. Parker? You are correct, Mayor. Okay, thank you. So. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Councilman. So if I heard you correctly, the thing that we would like to have come back at study session is to look at the process for at risk. Mr. Mayor, is that it? Yeah, I, I believe we just go through the process again. Like any good organization or company, I think just going back on how we do right. business is important I, to come in front of council. And I think that's at a later date can do that. Mr. Mayor, I will, I will respond that this is, as something that uh, Mr. Parker has already said, a very unusual circumstance. And so, to a certain extent, you might not want to try to make policy based on this particular circumstance. And, and I 100% uh, agree with that, but I think it's always good for at least a, a, a new set of eyes to look at at least how we do things and, and make sure everyone's on the same page. And again, recognize that there are unique circumstances to every rule or policy. And Mr. Mayor, I agree again. And when we do that, if it's just education during a study session, I would really appreciate that. And and to kind of talk about the water water the watering requirement and any kind of sto soil stabilization after you grade before you build. And we'll develop a, a presentation to council during work study. We'll bring in the engineering folks as well. Take your soup to nuts zoning then to implementation to issuing building permits and finals and so forth. Uh, we'll endeavor to do that. Initially, we'll paper it for you so that you see it in, in paper. And then when, I suspect we could do that within a couple of months. And then afterwards, when we start back to doing work studies, we'll bring it back to you and explain verbally how things work uh, as questions arise from the materials that we provide to you. Yeah. Mr. Tarkowski. Yeah, Mayor and Council, I, I would like to go ahead and point something out, and that is that we have a long history of building a community, a long history of going ahead and working with our development community and try to facilitate the managed growth of this town and going ahead and having developers move dirt at risk, as Richard had stated, and I want to state it very clearly, is something that we not only allow, but encourage, okay? Because at the end of the day, if there is something in a final construction plan that is not approvable, uh, whether it's width of, of right of way or slope or whatever, and uh, a, a contractor has started moving dirt and they need to modify that, we have had zero problem, zero in getting compliance with final approved plans. And so going ahead when you're moving hundreds of thousands of cubic yards of material, getting a head start on it is, is something that we have never frowned on, and that is what is going on in this case. And I think it's very important to, to go ahead and point out that not only the contractor but the developer in this case are not doing anything out of the ordinary in our community because we have encouraged the proper regulated growth in town is just a question of timing. And so I think that that needs to be very clearly said. Richard will come back during a work study and we'll sit there and talk about it. But I can point to many projects in this community that would have been a year late had it not been for the way that we approach development in this community and the, the shining light in that quite frankly, it was our hospital. Had we followed the way that other communities go ahead and do their approvals, that hospital would have been a year and a half late 
from the opening that it had, had we gone down the path of other communities who are overly regulatory, and that's a place we've never gone. So I just thought that needed to be said. And I just think at the, at the end of the day, it was just the, the at-risk part, which was confusing, um, at least to me it was, in regards to what a developer could do or not do at, at the end of the day. And I think that communication has been made clear in regards to what they are or are not responsible for. So with that, I appreciate that, Mr. Parker. And Mr. Mayor, one other thing I'd like to add to for a developer, everything is also contingent upon the weather, and this is bringing people more work and more jobs to our community as well, so please keep all that in consideration. Thank you. If we don't have any other comments, Clerk, would you please read the ordinance? Ordinance number 875. An ordinance of the mayor and common council of the town of Prescott Valley, a municipal corporation of Arizona, amending the town zoning map, ZMC 18-011, by changing the zoning classification of an approximately four acre from RCU 70 zoning residential conditional use permit to R1L-10 PAD zoning residential single family limited planned area development. Located in section 35, T15N, R1W, G and SRM, ratifying the earlier actions so changing the zoning classification of the same property taken February 14, 2019 by ordinance number 856 and all subsequent actions related thereto. And providing that this ordinance shall be effective 30 days after its passage and approval according to law. Thank you, Clark. Shall this ordinance pass? Vice Mayor Nine. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Grossman? Yes. Council Member Lori Hunt? Yes. Council Member Packard? Yes. Council Member Schumacher? Yes. Ca Mayor Palguda? Yes. The pass is unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Moving on to new business, number nine, the appointment to Planning and Zoning Commission, Sandra Laney. I believe, Vice Mayor, you have this? I am going to take care of it. One position on the Planning and Zoning Commission came open when Commissioner Rick Dusky passed away on February 3rd, 2020. Rick was first appointed to the commission on June 12, 2008, to a partial term. He then served five consecutive terms the most recent having a renewal date of October 31st, 2020. The vacancy had been advertised and two applications, applicants were received. Myself and council members Anderson and Grossman conducted interviews and are now recommending appointment of Sandra Laney for a term with a renewal date of October 31st, 2020. I'd like to thank Sandra and I'd like to reassure the rest of the council that she really, really um, is very appropriate to serve on this commission. So having said that, I'll make a motion. Motion to appoint Sandra Laney to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a term with a renewal date of October 21st, 2022. I'll second. Clerk, please call the vote. Mayor Kilpoguda? Yes. Council Member Schumacher? Yes. Council Member Packard? Yes. Council Member Hunt? Yes. Council Member Grossman? Yes. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Vice Mayor Nine? Yes. That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on, appointment Board of Adjustments, Ms. Sandra Griffith. One position on the Board of Adjustment came open when Edmund Craigan resigned on February 13th, 2020. Mr. Corrigan was first appointed to a partial term of the board on June 28th, 2018 for a term with a renewal date of January 31st, 2021. The vacancy was advertised and no applications were received. Vice Mayor Laurel Nye and Council Members Rick Anderson and Marty Grossman are therefore recommending a person they have previously interviewed for the Planning and Zoning Commission, and that would be our very own Sandra Griffiths to fill the vacancy on the Board of Adjustment. The term renewal date would be January 31st, 2021. And I want to give a real shout out to you, Sandy, and uh, thank you. 
this is a really important board, and we're delighted that, that after conversations you agreed to accept it. And I will make a motion to appoint Sandra Griffiths to the Board of Adjustment for a term with a renewal date of January 31st, 2021, by voice vote. I'll second. Clerk, please call the vote. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Grossman? Yes. Councilmember Packard? Yes. Councilmember Schumacher? Yes. Mayor Palguda? Yes. Vice Mayor Nye? Oh, yes. Councilmember Hunt? A resounding yes for Sandy. <laughs> that passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on, item 9C. Zoning map change, Prescott Charities. This is a public hearing. Mr. Parker, I'm opening up the public hearing as well. Yeah, I need to... <clears throat> yeah, that's perfect. Um, Mayor, Council, uh, you're considering a zoning map change, and this is a public hearing for the purpose of reviewing a proposed zoning map change um, <clears throat> to uh, enable a really unique uh, charitable organization to... Um, Blossom here in Prescott Valley. Prescott Charities has made an application uh, to rezone a portion of a commercial uh, property, one acre uh, total, uh, to a multiple family use district to allow for the construction of two approximately 5,000 square foot uh, buildings that will be used to house uh, people that are currently employed at uh, Antelope Park uh, in uh, Eastridge. Um, as you know, uh, this facility in East Ridge uh, caters to uh, challenged individuals, and they have a very similar uh, model in the city of Prescott where uh, they have a, a series of homes that cater to these individuals. So in this case, they'll be able to live very near where they work, and instead of busing them in and out, um, of the facility, they'll be able to walk on the nice sidewalks in East Ridge uh, to their place of uh, business. The whole purpose of this is to try to uh, create some independence uh, for these potentially higher functioning individuals. Uh, this came to the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, approximately a month ago. It received the unanimous recommendation. I will also tell you that uh, this recommendation is consistent or congruent to the recommendations of the town's uh, general plan 2020, excuse me, 2025. With that, I'll certainly respond to your questions or comments, but uh, we would recommend approval. Uh, I'll start. Um, I think it's a great project, great location. Um, this is truly something that is needed, and the work that they do over there is tremendous, and they should be commended for what they do, and this is, uh, once again, I cannot emphasize enough how great of a project this is, in my opinion. Vice Mayor. Now I can just say ditto. I am excited about it. Councilwoman. I talked to Mr. Newman about this several months ago, and he showed me the site, and I, too, am very excited. I love visiting the YEI uh, location, and I want to, for our listening public, comment that it's a little bit different from other changes of zones from commercial to residential in that this one is totally registered nonprofit and they won't be charging any rent to their residents. Do we have any comments? Anyone calling in tonight or this is a public hearing no, so nobody's called in. Let me check the lobby. Just let's just make sure we don't have anyone that wishes to make comments. Mr. Mayor, while while Go ahead. checking I just want to add to it, this is, this is a great project. Uh, if anybody has not gone by YEI or purchased any products from them, uh, the work that they do there uh, is absolutely in incredible. It's just an awesome program, and I'm so happy to see uh, this project getting off the ground. And with that being said, we're just going to give it a few more moments, wait for Mr. Tarkowski to come back, and let us know if anyone's out there that wishes to comment. Hopefully he comes back. <laughs> we're good. With that being said, we're going to close the public hearing. 
Move on to item 9D, um, zoning map change, ZMC 20-002, Prescott Charities. This is a first reading. Clerk, would you go ahead and let's start. I, I need a motion for a first I'll do reading. That. Motion to read ordinance number 876 by Ty Loney on two separate occasions, then place the same on final passage. I'd like to make a second. We have a motion and a second. Clerk, please call the vote. Vice Mayor Nye? Yes. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Grossman? Absolutely yes. Council Member Packard? Yes. Council Member Hunt? Yes, and congratulations. Council Member Schumacher? Yes. Mayor Polguda? Yes. And passes unanimously, Mayor. Thanks, ma'am. Now go ahead and please read the ordinance. Ordinance 876. An ordinance of the Mayor and Common Council of the Town of Prescott Valley, a municipal corporation of Arizona, amending the town zoning map CMC 20 002 to change the zoning classification of a one acre parcel APN. 103-05-009J from C2 PAD Commercial General Sales and Service Planned Area Development Zoning 2 RS PAD Residential and Services Planned Area Development Zoning and providing that this ordinance shall be effective 30 days after its passage and approval according to law. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on, item 9E. FDP 20-001, Alliance Home Improvement Center. Mr. Parker. Thank you. Uh, Van had done a really good job tonight, so I wanted to recognize her here <laughs> sitting in front of me. Um, <laughs> proposed is uh, approximately 35,000 square foot hardware and lumber store, uh, what would be immediately to the west of the Maverick that uh, exists at the, near the terminus of uh, Lakeshore Drive as it intersects with with uh, Glassford Hill Road. Uh, the proposal uh, is uh, consistent with the approved preliminary development plan which identified uh, these five parcels. Uh, this is on the larger parcel, approximately four acres in size. If we can get the next slide up. This is an illustration of the final development plan. Uh, there are uh, components of this uh, most of them meet the town standards. There was a minor uh, misunderstanding. We've clarified that with the uh, developer of this regarding multiple signage, free standage signage for this building. Uh, we've clarified that in writing to them most recently. Uh, however, the remaining aspects of this facility meet or exceed town standards, including parking configurations. Next. This is an illustration, um, an elevation of uh, the way the building will look um, from the private street uh, that bisects the property between Maverick and this proposed facility. Next, I think that's the last one. This is <clears throat> the actual elevations for the building. Again, it will be two stories in, in height, uh, less than 35 feet in total height, um, and the upper portion will uh, principally house employees and office space. The lower portion will provide for open storage of lumber as well as uh, various hardware accoutrements. Uh, we've, we've received no comment regarding this. It is consistent with uh, previously approved plans. I would respond to any questions you may have. Councilman Grossman. Yeah, I found it interesting that the side of the building that's facing Glassford Hill will be actually the back of the building. Uh, I know usually in the past there have been questions regarding uh, color and landscaping and all that. So I, I know this complies with it. I just found it interesting that they would have the building configured that way. And uh, I've seen other uh, facilities such as this. Your point's well taken. It has a facade facing uh, Glassford Hill Road. I, I think this one looks attractive all the way around it. So I think that uh, it'll be a needed uh, thing in downtown Prescott Valley. Councilman Packard? Uh, yes. This, there, isn't there a car wash going up real close to this thing? How is that going to affect that? If you want to go back a couple of slides. There we go. <laughs> the one immediately uh, to the north of the Maverick that you can see there right. is the one that's designated for a car wash. You'll see a final development plan on that uh, when they submit it um, prior to any permits being approved. Okay. 
I'm just look, curious about the traffic is going to be down in that area. But well, this is a private road. Um, it will conserve serve multiple commercial users. Um, we don't anticipate a problem with driveway locations, but we'll coordinate, of course, with Public Works as these things start to develop. Okay, thank you. Vice Mayor. My understanding is there isn't any road directly into the neighborhood behind there. Oh, uh, no, that's been long determined. And that's important for people to know. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that's that been long determined uh, many, many years ago. Right. And I just want to say, I like the tax dollars it's going to bring us. Thank you. Councilwoman Hunt. I just want to say thank you to Ben Hooper, who uh, did a gap analysis for sales tax leakage about a year or so ago, and uh, I'm told that the Fanes were able to use that to finalize this deal, and I'd like to give a shout out to the Fanes, too, for their uh, marketing eff efforts and their expediting to get this property closed so that the new owner could take um, advantage of the Opportunity Zone incentives, and I'm very excited that we're gonna have uh, the lumber part of it for various projects, and that this is business moving closer to the Proghorn Viewpoint area, and hopefully it's gonna be on a roll to get more businesses moving that way for those residents. Yep. The Mayor. Councilman. Yeah, uh, Councilman, uh, Council Member Hunt brought up a very important point re regarding uh, opportunity zones. Uh, and that was created with uh, our Economic Development Foundation in addition to our own economic developer, uh, Ben Hooper. So again, it's part of that three-legged stool that we have here with the town regarding the Economic Development Foundation and our Chamber of Commerce. So this is going to be a great addition to us, utilizing the opportunity zones that are available to them. With that being said, can I get a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, FDP 20-001 Alliance Home Improvement Center by voice vote. I'll second. Clerk, please call the vote. Council Member Grossman? Yes. Council Member Hunt? Yes. Council Member Packard? Uh, yes. Council Member Schumacher? Yes. Mayor Polguda? Yes. Vice Mayor Nye? Very big yes. Council Member Anderson? Yes. The pass is unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on to item 9F, Memorandum of Understanding with NACOG, Voucher Transit System. Mr. Davis? Yes, Mayor and Council. What you have before you tonight is a renewal of a long-standing 20-plus uh, year program that we've had a relationship with uh, Northern Arizona Council of Governments, NACOG, for their transit voucher system. Uh, council has had a, a particular policy that the last uh, many years to fund it to a funding level of $50,000. The uh, memorandum of understanding you have before you uh, does continue that particular endeavor uh, for discussion for next fiscal year starting uh, July 1st. A little background on this. This is rides for basic services for the transit dependent community. And of course, they need to qualify through NACOG. Uh, typically, every year we have our NACOG representative, uh, Leah Sakovich, uh, give us a presentation of this year's program, some of the highlights, and the uh, transit dependent community, the clients that they serve. So I know she's uh, available uh, telephonically, and I, Casey's going to queue her up so she can present uh, uh, the highlights of this year's program. Hi, good after, uh, good evening, Mayor and members of the council, and thank you for uh, allowing me to appear telephonically today. Um, give me just one moment, and we should be able to see my presentation online. Okay, can everyone see my presentation? Go for it. Okay, I'm gonna roll forward um, and hopefully you can see my screen. Um, and I've prepared this um, reflecting from June 2019 to March of 2020. 
Um, we don't have our final figures in just yet for April. Um, just to give you a little bit of history of our NACOG and voucher program, we've been in partnership with the town of Prescott Valley for over 15 years to meet individual transit needs of Prescott Valley residents. Since 2018, uh, NACOG contributes an additional $5,000 annually uh, to help spread those vouchers a little bit further for the community. Also, as a note, uh, due to the current COVID-19 pandemic um, this month, our regional director, Terry Drew, added an additional $5,000 for people to gain necessary medication and doctor visits at this time. <clears throat> this service is a lifeline for so many. It's the difference between gaining medical services, food, employment, or not. And so why is this service vital? Um, it provides door-to-door -door services uh, for those who cannot maybe make it to a bus stop. Um, it provides individualized customer service. Um, uh, the drivers help load and unload items, help uh, with uh, individuals in and out of their vehicle. Um, it's an access for all, uh, no matter what their circumstances are. Um, it provides job, jobs and revenue for transit providers. And just to give you a snapshot of how we're doing, uh, currently we typically have about 500 rides monthly and an average of 100 riders per month. Um, in the month of March, we did have an increase, of course, of 125, um, and that was the additional capabilities with funding. Um, unfortunately, it's serving less than half the reported need. However, um, the town of Prescott Valley is the only area that provides the service to their residents, and I know that they're extremely grateful. To give you a picture of what types of services um, people are accessing through the voucher program, um, you'll see that the majority is falling with medical and basic needs. Um, also followed by work and job search, counseling, and social services. And um, thought it would be valuable so that you could see some of the comments that participants that take advantage of this uh, voucher transit system have to say. I'm just going to read a couple of them. Uh, Julie A., really, really helpful, very grateful, don't know what I would do without them. Um, Verda D, I'm a senior, I live alone, no family, and I'm almost blind. Extremely helpful, thank you. Patricia G, very beneficial, gives peace of mind, 88 years old and don't drive. Barbara H, beneficial as in I have the use of a power chair and housebound, a lifesaver. Don't know what I would do without them. Larry M, legally blind, used for doctor appointments and necessities. And Connie W, life is so much easier, not bound to the house, gives me some dignity, a lifesaver, I appreciate it. And with that, um, our sincere thanks. Um, our team at NACOG um, thoroughly enjoys uh, participating in this program. We uh, enjoy speaking with our participants each month, and we're proud to administer this service. And that concludes my review, if there's any questions or comments from the council. Vice Mayor. Um, many people know I chair NACOG, but what I'm going to say to you now has nothing to do with my chairing NACOG. It has everything to do with someone who is going to need this. I just don't know when I'm going to need it. Where I live, I have to go uphill or downhill, and I'm physically not able to do that now. So when I can't drive, this may be the only means I personally will have some independence. I'm extremely proud of this council for all the years that they've provided this service. The only thing I regret is that we can't give the amounts we once did because we are doing the best we can with our budget constraints, but our need is greater than the gift we're able to give. 
Councilwoman? I just have an administrative question, Larry, um, since I'm new. So do we usually approve these contracts before we approve the budget? Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. In this particular case, uh, uh, the contract is uh, getting uh, in a position to expire. We have repeatedly renewed this contract because uh, previous councils have uh, deemed it an essential service uh, for members of our community. And by going ahead and uh, proving that, then we make sure that it is inserted in the budget that is presented to you in these dollar amounts. Uh, but going ahead and having the continuity of service uh, and our subcontractor, NACOG, uh, will then be able to move forward with their budgeting process because they have uh, individuals uh, that uh, rely on this as well. But most of the contracts we do after we approve the budget. Not necessarily. Uh, Norm will be coming to you with a number of annual contracts uh, that you will be asked to approve, even though it will be for next fiscal year. That will be built into the budget with the dollar amounts that you end up approving. And so Norm's got about, what, 15 individual contracts that he's okay. going out to bid on things like sweeping and uh, street sweeping or uh, center line striping or pedestrian striping, any of those, our mowing contracts, our garbage contracts, all of those things are out to bid now or will be shortly and uh, you'll be asked to go ahead and approve those before the adoption of the final budget. So but, we know what to budget. But what you will end up doing by approving, just like if you elect to do that this evening, uh, then it will be included in the budget for that amount. And then I just would like to thank NACOG for their annual $5,000 addition and the $5,000 they did this March and April. Councilman. It, it might be easier to understand that as part of the department budgets, this is, this is not an increase to anything. It's part of the standard department budgets. Uh, so it's not something that's going to come as a surprise to us in the final budget. It's part of what they present to us each year. Mayor, I want to take the opportunity to comment, too, that uh, in these uncertain times with the COVID-19, um, lots of people out of work, uh, there is a need. And what's nice about this established program that's been in place for many, many years, you heard uh, Ms. Sakovich mention that another 5,000 is being implemented due to the current uh, environment we live in. Um, I uh, have been involved with some correspondence with the uh, CYMPO here. There's some federal money through the CARES program that could be made available for transit. With any particular incentive or you need those services right away, um, I'm encouraged that we're currently working through CYMPO that if there's transit dollars through CARES, this is a prime program that it can be supercharged right away. The jobs are available tomorrow type of thing with funding put into place. Um, NACOG does a great job screening clients in addition to identifying the need. And uh, since they're already have to prove, you know, quasi-government, you know, federal type uh, arm and processing, um, they have things in place, the, um, you know, checks and balances in order to put money, if it comes from the federal government, put it in place immediately and get that need to that transit dependent community out there so they can get rides to uh, job interviews or actually to jobs when they become available. So uh, that's a nice thing about this program is it could be amended, so to speak, in these uncertain times. It hasn't been done, but obviously that's in play right now in these uncertain times. I have a question. Who, who are the contracted vendors? They qualify through NACOG. But I, I, yeah, I'm assuming just we use more than one taxi service or and then and right it's available to just anyone who's qualified so there's quite a list and there's some competition that goes on when a particular client calls them up says hey I need a ride uh, there's where your competition is at of course it's the local taxi uh, community and or the Uber or anyone that uh, provides a ride and can bill for it and meets NACOG's qualification requirements so yes to answer your question yeah, there's many about uh, six to seven uh, qualified clients. Maybe Ms. Akavich could help us yeah, with that. Can she no. clarify that? Okay, can I, as chair now of NACOG, <laughs> this time I will accept that title. At this point, uh, 
like so many other things, we're going out to bid. And there could be new ones this year from other years. And he's accurate when he says uh, multiple. The most important thing for us when we go out to bid, bid is we demand accountability for the usage. Uh, we don't want it abused. We don't want it improperly used because then that takes a voucher away from someone who desperately needs it. So there's quite a vetting process that takes place, and that's going on now. I'd just like to, to add either put it in MOU. I believe it should. I've asked from the past in regards to a log or just a, a I don't need names or anything, but I'd like to see the destinations. We saw a, a pie graph in regards to where people were going and things like that. And I don't know if we're relying on the vendor themselves to provide it, but I've asked, and no one seems to be able to provide this list in regards to when someone was picked up, person A, where they were dropped off, date and time. And I just think to add that in an MOU, to have that accountability, to come back to council, I think it's fiscally responsible. If we're gonna write a check for $50,000, that we know that person A, went from their home to a medical clinic and then back. I've, I've personally witnessed this program be abused when people were picked up at a bar and taken home and used a voucher. So I just want the accountability as a council member. I think we should be able to see that um, from NACOG and I think they would expect that as well. So do we need to add that into the motion? So I don't know if you need to. I'm just saying, as it reads, without being able to. I'm sorry, Mr. Tarkowski. No, oh. There was a question over here about how we would accomplish that, and we can do that administratively with okay. NACOG. I, I see, Mr. Davis, you're taking notes on that. Yeah, if you could just put that in there. I have no issues. I believe the need is there. I just want us to have different layers in place to assure accountability in regards to who our vendors are, if it is one vendor, and the ability to track. That's all. I'd like to see that. It's usually from three to five. Then each vendor, if they're going to bid it, then they should be held accountable that they will provide a log every month of person A going from this location to that location. Um, I just think there's just too much of an opportunity to, to slip through the cracks here. Mr. Mayor, would, would you also be interested in asking uh, the, uh, the Northern Arizona Council of Governments representative in the Prescott area that as money is going to be directed from Washington to Yavapai County, that if there are tr uh, dollars associated with transportation, that she should aggressively pursue any of those so that this program, while there is this one opportunity based on economic hardship, uh, that we would go ahead and be interested in expanding the program with outside money uh, added to the town's contribution. Yeah, I, I believe that's a, a good a good reason and a good thought process there in regards to if the opportunity persists, then we should be able to take advantage of that. And as we've already heard that there are more of a need than we can provide the help for. If we can make that opportunity um, possible, then we definitely need to pursue that. So are we ready for a motion? Any, any more questions? No? Motion to approve renewal of the memorandum of understanding with NAGCON for the voucher transit system through fiscal year 20, 2021 by a voice vote. I'll second. Clerk, please call the vote. Council Member Hunt? Yes. Council Member Packard? Yes. Council Member Schumacher? Yes. Mayor Palguda? Yes. Council Member Grossman? Yes. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Vice Mayor Nye? Yes. The pass is unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on, item 9G, bid award for cleanup day 2020. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Mayor Council. This next item, I come uh, before you every year, uh, our cleanup day that we uh, sponsor every year in the spring. It's always the first weekend in May. Uh, it's staff's recommendation that we move forward to this particular uh, program again this year. But obviously with the current uh, environment we're in with the COVID-19, there's been a few uh, particular adjustments made that uh, staff is recommending to this year's program. You, the flyer you see in front of you has uh, been developed and uh, tuned up a little bit uh, to current standards. I would like uh, 
to note that typically we partner with the Chamber of Commerce for their very popular event, the Team Up to Clean Up. Uh, we've heard from uh, uh, Marnie Ewell with the, the Chamber, uh, CEO, that uh, they'd like to postpone this event due to the current environment until September. So we've noted that. In addition, with the uh, social distancing that we'd like to be mindful of, uh, we're very confident as staff that we can operate and maintain this particular uh, dump day. But the interface that we typically have with the charging, of basically with that charge rate up there, would uh, breach some of that particular social distancing. So it's staff recommendation that we uh, don't charge this year and eliminate that particular social distancing. I'd like to point out to Council, too, in uh, past uh, cleanup days, we get about a 15% fare box recovery, so to speak. The events cost us around 40000 We gain around five or 6000 in actual money collected. So um, it's not a, a, you know, that's the amount that we'd be uh, particularly uh, forfeiting, so to speak, by offering a no-charge uh, event. But I think uh, understanding the environment, it, it would be uh, very popular with, uh, you know, people staying home, cleaning up their yards. Uh, it would be a very good event that we could offer to residents this year. Uh, even with the COVID and the social distancing and the recommendations for it uh, moving forward in that society. So we uh, did go out for a bid for the hauling services. Uh, the public works staff would uh, manage the particular site like we do every year. Uh, everything's pretty much the same on where it's held and the um, allowable waste. But uh, we did take uh, bids for a hauling contract and Patriot Disposal, a local uh, waste hauling and collection firm is the low bidder and the staff's recommendation that we award uh, to them for the hauling services for the amount of waste that's brought in. I would like to add, too, uh, we typically interface with Yavapai County. Uh, they haven't been able particularly to uh, put together their full um, particular uh, participation, approval of participation, but it would be open to, uh, to them if they so choose, and we would keep track of the waste. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. I have, couple, I have a couple, Norm. So we're going to allow county residents to bring their disposables into our town to get rid of. Correct. We'd have. So why do we say on here, please be prepared to show proof of residency? Is that because we're tracking where? OK. So why are we using our money, our precious herf money, to, for county residents. The county reimburses us? Okay, cool. That was a good answer, Norm. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> good answer. Then my next question is, is this really the flyer you're going to use? Correct. That's what's been developed. Do you have any Okay, comments? well, I don't like it. <laughs> Sorry. I don't like the X's. I don't like the slap in the face to the chamber not participating. And I think it's a little wordy. Actually, we uh, did present this to the chamber, and they did like the fact that you know it was shown postponed, that residents would know. So, um, as far as uh, particular individual comments, uh, this is the the amount that we've done every year with the flyer. It, it contains information. We do take quite a few phone calls. We do like to make it specific enough on what wastes aren't allowed. So when people show up and say, "Don't bring your ammunition and your pro propane tanks," we can get bunches of them because they do charge to take them out. We don't accept them. We told you were you were warned. I think it's got the right amount of detail to do allow that, how to get there. But I'd be happy to take any adjustments you'd like to make. Did Heidi look at it? This, this is the flyer they've been using for years. I know, but it's got big X's on it. Can we have? Can we just have Heidi look at it? That's, I, I'm one person, though, so you guys. Where are we advertising this at? I, mean, I know it's short notice, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have questions about this event, just being that so many things are closed. Well, true, it's been in a state of flux. It's been on the Public Works website because people do call. Uh, this particular one uh, got the X's when we did hear back when we sent the flyer. Marnie, Chamber, you have any event? Um, we've updated our Public Works website. Sure. We've been reluctant to put it out like we typically do in the monthly town news. I talked to Heidi a month ago. She says, well, the governor, you don't know every week it could get more restrictive, and you've told people you're doing it, and how do you pull it back if you put it out in the mailer? So specifically, we... I uh, didn't put it in the town news because uh, it could be day-to-day. -day. I mean, this is still three weeks away. And usually in the past, someone greets them at the window of their car. Like, we won't be doing that interaction or that contact. Right? Yeah, they, they, could, they can literally be in their car with their window up and not have contact with a person if that's something that they're You're worried absolutely about. correct. That's why the elimination of fee this year, there will be no contact uh, needed between 
our finance staff, which was normally there to collect the dollars. Uh, we wanted to eliminate that contact point, and so all we're going to do is ask for a roll down window. Are you county or town? To show us evidence we're done. And can we have uh, Heidi look at the document? The answer is yes. Thank you. And we'll maintain our six feet of physical distancing, I'm sure, when we have contacts. So. Way far away. And even we'll take the extra, you know, a lot of times some of the public works workers will help you unload a car. That's uh, changed this year. If someone needs help, they really need to bring their own help. Um, we'll help point them and direct them, but keep that distance and not help them unload. Great. That's some of the changes we've implemented. Or Other planted. questions or comments for Mr. Davis? Can we get a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the bid award for the cleanup day uh, to take place sometime in 2020 by voice vote. I'd like to make a second. Clerk, please call the vote. Council Member Packard? Yes. Mayor Palguda? Yes. Council Member Schumacher? Yes. Vice Mayor Nye? Yes. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Council Member Grossman? Yes. Council Member Hunt? Yes. That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on, item 10. Uh, for those of you that are at home and wish to call in, here's going to be your opportunity. I'm going to read the paragraph per Mr. Legler's direction every time. Consideration and discussion of general unscheduled comments from the public. Those wishing to address the council need not request permission in advance. Any such remarks shall be addressed to the council as a whole and not to any member thereof. Such remarks shall be limited to five minutes, unless additional time is granted by the mayor. At the conclusion of the unscheduled comments, individual members of the council may respond to the item addressed at the discretion of the mayor, or they may ask the town manager to review the matter or ask that the matter be placed on a future agenda. I don't believe anyone else is out in the, in the audience, but do we have? Okay, we do have a caller. Yes, it's Robert. It's Rob Essen. Mr. Essen, welcome. You'll probably recognize my accent anyway. I was very displeased that I was unable to call in during item 8A on the agenda. I believe that the council made its vote based on incorrect information. There was continuous statements during the discussion that the developer was entitled to undertake at-risk grading because the developer had a SWIP plan in place. However, I hold in my hand right now an email from Mr. Parker dated March 30, 11.44 a.m., which confirms that SWIP plans are approved based on an approved FDP. There was no approved FDP. The prior FDP that had been thought to be approved became moot because the legal requirements for notice had not occurred. Consequently, it is impossible that any SWIP plan can have been approved based on an approved FDP. That's the quote again from Mr. Parker's email, because there was no approved FDP. I am very unhappy that I was uh, told by the computer when I called in, there is someone else on the line, and there was no one else on the line speaking. This meant that I was unable to speak to council and let them know about this. I wish you to be aware of this. Thank you, sir. Any other calls? I'm sorry. 
All right, Mr. Essen, thank you very much. As you, I'm sure, are aware that we don't respond back in regards to call of the public. Thank you, sir. All right, Casey, we got another one. Nobody else. Again, if you'd like to call in, we have a few moments. I think if they were calling in when Mr. Essen was on it, it would have gotten a busy signal, correct? So here's their opportunity to, to try to reach back in. And just to be clear also, we don't take comments from the public during second readings. And that, and that Casey's advising that's why he did not answer the phone because we do not take in those calls during that time. And if, as it would have been the same as if someone was here present and they had asked to speak, they would have been denied at that time because that is not proper procedure. With that being said, it doesn't appear as if we have any more calls coming in. If not, Moving on to item 11, can I get a motion? I very happily give you a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Clerk, please call the vote. Council Member Hunt? Yes. Council Member Schumacher? Yes. Council Member Packard? Yes. Council Member Grossman? Yes. Council Member Anderson? Yes. Vice Mayor Nye? Yes. Mayor Palguda? Yes. That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Everyone have a great night.